Today, I have amassed some of the best 120 millimeter PC cooling fans currently on the market, and we're gonna test them all out to see which one you should get for your next PC build. Small, small disclaimer though, none of these fans have RGB, so let me know how that makes you feel in the comment section below. Normally you guys come up with some pretty funny comments. I'm gonna take the one that makes me laugh the hardest, and I'll pin it at the top, so I'll, I'll see you there. Now lately, a lot of companies have released some new fans that all claim to be the next top dog for the PC cooling world, and this one is no different. This is the T30 from Fantex. Now the T30 is a 120 millimeter fan that is 30 millimeters thick and it is made from glass fiber reinforced LCP for both the fan frame and the fan blades. Now if LCP sounds familiar to you, that is because it's the same stuff or the same type of material that Noctua uses on their A12X25. I don't know if they use it on both their fan frame and their blades, but I do know that they use it on their blades at the very least. Now Fantex claims that this 120 millimeter fan features the best aerodynamic design and is made from quality industrial grade components to give it the best balance between unparalleled performance and low noise operations. And all that is marketing talk for this thing is made of some fancy parts. Some of the more notable ones are the dual vapor bearings and the magnetic levitation technology. Great Scott! Now the vapor bearings, they are a proprietary design created by Sunon for cooling fans. They, they're designed to eliminate wobbling and reduce wear, allowing this fan to essentially run quieter for longer, which is always a good thing in your PC cooling fans. As for the magnetic levitation, which sounds very impressive, what they've done is essentially placed a magnetic plate underneath their motor stator, which means that when the rotor is placed on top with the magnets in it, it's gonna be attracted to that plate evenly around 360 degrees. And what they say is this lowers the CG and essentially helps stabilize it, or so I'm told. I don't know how much it does, but hey, it's in there. We can see it, it's right there. What I think is really cool though, maybe two things. One, the first one is just like the fact that you can daisy chain these, which at first I didn't really, I was like, ooh, cool. You can daisy chain it. But after we rebuilt this PC, I can see where that is like a huge, a huge benefit because it is a pain to cable manage all the fan cables coming down, but if you could just chain them all together and just run one or maybe groups of three, that's pretty awesome. But other than that, they have on the back here, three different settings. So there's a dip switch on the back that allows you to change this from hybrid to performance to advanced. Now hybrid mode means that it has a max RPM of 1200, but the fan itself does not run at all until it gets a PWM signal of 50% or higher. Performance mode is pretty much the standard one that you'll be running mostly. It's the recommended setting. It has a max RPM of 2000. And then there's advanced mode, which basically just allows this thing to run free and it spins up to 3000 RPM. Now I imagine if you run it at 3000, it's gonna be a little loud, but let's check it out. So it's set to 3000. Let's just plug it in real quick and see, see what it sounds like. What the? Okay. When's the last time you seen the? F I don't want to get my fingers in there. When's the last time you've seen a PC cooling fan drive across the desk? <laughs> does that, that doesn't, can we, that doesn't happen at 2000, does it? There we go. Let's just check. This is very scientific. We must, we must know. It wiggles a little bit, but it's definitely not running across the desk trying to, trying to eat your fingers. But anyway, now, Fantex is talking a pretty big game with this fan, so we need some uh, big boy competition to put up against it to really see if the claims they are making are true at all. And it should probably go without saying that the first fan that we are going to test alongside this one is Noctua's big brown boy, the A12X25. Same material and blade clearance. So both the Fantex T30 and the Noctua A12X25 claim to have 0.5 millimeters of clearance between the blade tips and the fan frame, or essentially the, the fan duct. And if you know anything about ducted fans, the closer you can get the tips of the blades to the fan duct without touching, the better off you'll be. So this should do pretty good. And we can't have these two fans if we don't have the original OG, the Gentle Typhoon. And if you don't know anything about this fan, it came out many, many years ago and it was produced by Nidex Servo and it was sold by Scythe way back then. Some would even say without this fan, we would have none of these. And although this came out around like 2012, I think, these are still for sale today. But speaking of Scythe, 
did you know that they kind of made a new Gentle Typhoon? And it has the best name I've ever heard when it comes to like a PC fan. T30, A12X25. Gentle Typhoon's not bad, but this one's pretty good. This is the, the Scythe Wonder Snail 120. And it looks strikingly similar to the Gentle Typhoon. It, it does spin the opposite way. I don't actually know if there was any, um, if the development of this fan was influenced by this one at all, but I think they look similar. And they both have funny names. And this one used to be sold by Scythe. And this one is sold by Scythe. So there you go. And if that wasn't enough for you, I decided to throw one more in. One more in because it looks very similar to another fan on this list. This is the Thermal Take A12, I mean, Tough Fan 12. This is essentially the Control C, Control V fan equivalent. Let's just put it by the one it looks very, very remarkably similar to. There you go. So yeah, the Thermal Take Tough Fan 12 looks suspiciously like the A12X25. So I wanted to, you know, add it in there because this thing claims to be better than this thing. This thing wants to be this thing. This thing came before all these things and these are kind of together. I don't know. Yeah, none of that adds up. But we're not done yet. Remember this thing? <laughs> this is the cheater from the Fan Showdown. It is currently the first place fan in the Fan Showdown. And I decided why not add this ginormous monstrosity to the mix because we all know how well it did in the Fan Showdown. So let's see how well it does in some actual fan testing. I mean, you could, honestly, if you have one of these, you could make one of those. I didn't release the models for the fan because it's not really mine to release, but you could make your own. Look at it. You can make it. So that brings us back to testing. How exactly are we planning to test all of these fans? Well, that's where Fantex is also helping us out because you guys have actually asked me to build something like this for quite a while, but luckily we don't have to because Fantex sent one over. Somebody's feeling pretty confident about how good their fan is. In this testing kit, we have a wind tunnel. And then they also included a little, not a little, a giant bendy anemometer, which we can use to measure the airspeed through the wind tunnel. And then using a little bit of math, knowing the inside diameter of this tube, we can figure out what the CFM of each fan is. And then we can do things like add radiators and heat sinks and different front panel designs for cases to figure out how each fan performs and kind of get an idea of which one is the best. As for the fan setup, I'll be running each fan on this setup with all these different situations at a noise normalized 37.2 dBA, and then we'll run them all again, maxed out so they can just run as fast as they can. Also, I should mention that all the fans are gonna be running in a pull configuration, so they'll be pulling air through the radiator or through the heat sink or through all of our different front panel setups. For the air cooler, we'll be using the U12A from Noctua, and the radiator is the Coolstream SE120 from EK. So when it comes to full out, the T30 looks to have a pretty significant advantage with a measured RPM of 2,980. And if we look at how they all finished, you can easily detect the correlation between max RPM and max CFM. With one exception, the, the cheater here. The cheater actually came in second, although it only spins at 1,811 RPM. Now, obviously the cheater has a bit more going on that's giving it the edge over just a standard fan, but I thought that was pretty interesting. But with great performance comes great noise output. The T30 running full out in advanced mode came in with a massive 54.3 dBA measured at 150 millimeters from the fan. When it comes to noise output at full speed, this is kind of where the Noctua A12X25 really shines coming in first place overall. But when we slow things down a little bit, things get a little bit more interesting. To noise normalize all these fans, I position them 150 millimeters away from my decimeter and then I use this little fan PWM controller to basically tune the fan speed until all of them leveled out at 37.2 dBA. And then I took note of the RPM and that is the RPM that all these fans ran when they were noise normalized. In the noise normalized testing, the T30 still managed to stay on top followed closely by the Nesto cheater. So Nesto is the one that designed the cheater here. But what I found the most interesting in this data set is that although the T30 was running slower than the A12X25, it was able to outperform it. And I think that's due to the fact that most of these fans, including the A12X25, are 25 millimeters thick, whereas the T30 is a additional five millimeters or 30 millimeters thick. And I think that extra girth gives it the advantage over the other fans. But I mean, as long as you got the room for the 30 millimeter fan, I mean, this, this thing's making a pretty good case why it should be your next fan. But more importantly, look at the Gentle Typhoon. 
Although it's only spinning at a whopping 1,451 RPM, it's in second place overall, if we're just looking at consumer fans. And I think that's like the perfect representation of why a fan this old is still being manufacturing and sold like 10 years later. But I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, the A12X25 is meant for static pressure. That's why it's obviously being beat on these free flow airflow tests. It's not really designed for that. I see where you're going with that. In the pull configuration, as in the fan is pulling air through things like the radiator and heat sink and case and stuff like that, the T30 is still on top with the gentle typhoon nibbling at its heels. I left out the cheater in this testing because not really set up for a pull configuration, you could say. So just consumer fans in this one. And if we look at all the different case configurations, the mesh, the closed front panel, this, the open mesh, the T30 still managed to stay on top. Here's all the data, both the full out testing in blue and the noise normalized testing in orange. And you can pause these at any time if you want to take a closer look at them. But for the most part, the T30 is number one. So yeah, after doing all this testing with all these fans and looking at all these numbers, is the T30 really the best fan, at least in this group of fans that I have right here, including the, the crazy one? Yeah, regardless if you're running full out where it has the advantage of having a massive 3000 RPM ceiling or running it noise normalized, it performed the best. And I think Fantex probably knew that. That's why they sent this whole kit out, but their claims are founded. Also, given its price is only $30.99 as of today on Amazon, it's, it's a pretty decent deal given that the Noctua A12X25 is $32.90 and the T30 was able to outperform it. I think, uh, I think that's justifiable. But honestly, to me, the real winner here today is, is the Gentle Typhoon. Yeah, it lost to the T30 every single time, but this thing will only cost you $23.95. And if you look at its performance throughout the, all the testing, and you take away the cheater, it's almost always in second. So I guess if you want the absolute best performing fan, you don't care anything about noise, you just want something that moves air and cools stuff well, Fantex has got you covered with the T30, but in my opinion, the best bang for your buck after seeing all this testing is the Gentle Typhoon. If it ain't broke, don't fix it.